What is going on y'all? So today on Dylan Talks Tone, we're going to talk about wax potting pickups. Uh, let's just get right into it. So um, basically, no matter what style of pickup you have, you know, single coils, humbuckers, P90s over there, um, Telecaster pickups over here, um, they all, most for the most part, modern ones anyway, are wax potted. And so first we're going to talk about what the reason for that is. I'm going to show you some stuff, kind of the innards of some pickups, and then we're also going to hear the difference between a wax potted humbucker and one that is not wax potted. Actually, hang on a second, I'll show you. So we have our Somnium guitar here that we're going to use again for this video. I don't know if you've seen this before, but it's got these cartridges that you can just pop out on demand and we can put a different one in there. And... Uh, we can just go kind of before and after and do some quickie stuff. So this will be pretty cool. In order to understand why we would need to wax pot a pickup, let's just quickly talk about how a pickup works. Basically what we're doing is we're holding the pickup in a certain spot. We've got the strings suspended or passing over the top of it, and they are within the magnetic field of the pickup. When that string vibrates, it kind of more or less jiggles the magnetic field or well it moves within it and through some black magic called inductance uh, then it basically makes a voltage inside the pickup but for that to happen the string needs to move relative to the pickup so we want the pickup basically to stay as still as possible and more importantly to this discussion all the parts in the side of the pickup to stay as still as possible and only have the string move above it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've taken the pickups out of the Somnium guitar so we can just have a quick reference here. So this is a P90 and this is a humbucker. This is pretty much normally what we are used to, right? We always see them assembled. But let's look at them in pieces. All these pieces are inside this humbucker pickup. These six pull piece screws right here. We've got the slugs over here. We've got the bobbins. We've got the keeper bar that kind of holds it all together underneath. We've got a base plate. Okay, we've got the magnet. And of course, there's also a piece of wire that comes out of there that hooks all of this up. And then when you put a cover on it, you've also got the cover that goes on the top. Remember when we said that the way a guitar makes a sound is we vibrate the pick, the string over the pickup. Well, the thing is, is that when we vibrate the string, everything in the guitar kind of shakes too, right? It all vibrates. And what we don't want to have happen is we don't want all of these individual pieces to move um, independently of or outside of what we actually want the string to move uh, in relation to the pickup. So if the string moves and then the pickup's all jangly inside, it's gonna give you a whole bunch of affect sounds and stuff that you don't want. It sounds like this. A P90 that you see from the outside that normally looks like this is all of these pieces inside. Six pull pieces, two magnets, not just one. Uh, another bar magnet keeper thing, a bar keeper underneath there, a base plate, the cover, which is in this case plastic, and then a bobbin and some eyelets that I've already pressed into this one. So a whole bunch of pieces. So here's what can happen. If we go back to our overhead, We've got our bobbins on here, and when this thing is all assembled, uh, the, the magnet sits here like this against the base plate, and then the bobbins sit on top of it. Well, if we strike the string, and then the base plate moves um, in relation to or because of the string moving, we don't want that. If the magnet rattles against the base plate, we don't want that. Uh, on a P90, if the same thing, if both of those magnets actually sit underneath the pickup like this, kind of, here, I'll just kind of mock it up for you and show you. 
they sit on top of that base plate like that. And then those magnets are next to each other. The screw is coming down from the top. And then that little dude sits on top of there. And then we have the cover on top of it. If all that stuff's rattling around inside there, it's giving us stuff that we don't want. Now, if we go back to the humbucker and we put a cover on top of it, then we basically have a diaphragm, like a microphone, that will vibrate independent of what we want the strings to be showing it. So now it's introducing a whole nother vibrating surface in there. Usually, that ends up being some sort of squeal. Here's a little thing too. If you have an unpotted pickup and you have the cover on it, you can actually yell into it and that top of that pickup will act as a diaphragm like on a microphone and you can actually hear your voice in the guitar. When we wax pot it, we can take all of that stuff away and all of those noises go away. Remember all that tapping and crazy stuff we just heard? Now watch after it's been wax potted. The real question that you want to know is, does it actually make the guitar sound different? Does it change the tone? So let's listen to it back to back and you tell me, first you're going to hear it unpotted and then you're going to hear it potted. You tell me if you can hear a difference in the tone between those two pickups. <laughs> What did you hear when you listened to that? I, it's, it's quieter. It, there are all these little extraneous noises that go away and you don't have to worry about how you touch your guitar. That's number one for me. And number two, we couldn't play it like in front of a loud amp because when the air is moving in the room because of an amplifier, because the speaker is moving the sound, then the guitar can be a lot more lively. It becomes, there's a lot of fun to it actually because it responds to your, your playing because the air is moving the guitar and then the guitar is much more lively. The problem is, is that it can become problematic um, with noises and, and weird stuff and squealing and feedback and uncontrollable feedback and all that kind of stuff. So long and the short of it is, um, let me know what you think in the comments of how it sounds, what you prefer. But the bottom line is most of the time it's going to be wax potted these days just because of the convenience factor, because it just makes a guitar easier to live with, especially in loud and noisy environments. It's just a much more easy to get along with thing. Anyway, uh, there's a cool little experiment. Let me know what you think. Get in the comments. Tell me what your press preference is. Do you have a guitar without wax potted pickups or do you have one with wax potted pickups or both? Um, and also, um, let me know if you've ever had problems with that wax potting too, because um, there has been, you know, after a while, a guitar can age and then it'll get dry and then the wax can, or you can drop a pickup and it'll come apart in there and then it'll start to squeal again and you can kind of wax pot them and fix them. But, mm, you know, it's easier just to get another one. Anyway, let me know what you think. Make sure you like and subscribe and all of the things that you do on YouTube's. Um, the pickups that you heard in this video, there will be a link to them in the description below, as well as to the guitar and the amps and cables and stuff we all used. Um, if you let, use those links, it does help us out, so I appreciate it. And I guess we will see you tomorrow on our Tuesday Hangout live stream. We'll see ya.